Dear brothers and sisters, I'm very thankful to the Lord for the gathering like this. This is the sixth message for the church life in the church in Cleveland or wherever you are. Please remember that now. This message is not just a message for you to hear, to receive some life, to get some life supply, to get into some truths, to enjoy a good time. No. This message is really for the church life, for church in Cleveland, that every week we should have a short message about 30, 40 minutes. In this message, we have profound truths. We have clear utterance. We have a nourishing of life. We enjoy something of Christ. But remember, this is not for you. It is not just a message for us to listen, then as a process, then we go through it, then we wait for next week. No, this is a fellowship for the whole church where you're watching it or either with brothers together or by yourself in another time. Remember, this is a church gathering. Church gathering together, listen to the message, and then in teams we fellowship. More than that, then in the coming week for six days, every day <clears throat> the brothers, some brothers, will prepare the supplement for you, for you to get into it, for you to study. So eventually uh, what we are going to share in this series, it may be 50 messages for four months, then after that I hope everything's clear, we can come to there again, come together again. When the church will be able to come together again, we will stop this series. I think at that time, this series should be finished. But whatever, brother, uh, this is a part of the church life. When you listen to this, please remember, there are hundreds of saints are listening to this message with you together in a church gatherings, even though we do not see one another. So this is not a message for you to pursue, for you to get extra knowledge, for you to be a little bit richer. No, this is a sharing for the church life in the church in Cleveland or in the church where you are in. This is marvelous. So brother, let's continue now. Uh, we have covered uh, in so far uh, five messages, basically stress on. This is a change, a change of dispensation. Remember we said a change of dispensation from law to life, from God outward to God inward, from outward services to a real life flowing inside with many other Christian brothers. We are coming out of the Old Testament or coming into New Testament. Let me ask you, what is the biggest difference between Old Testament and New Testament? You may say it's a very different. Old Testament is outside. New Testament is inside. It's true. Old Testament is all. New Testament of Christ is true. Old Testament is on behaviors. New Testament is on life is also true. And there's another thing <clears throat> we should be very clear. Old Testament, God has a chosen people. These chosen people are Israelites. God cared for Israelites. God is with Israelites, was with Israelites. God stood with them, uh, rebuked them, encouraged them, uplift them, tried to help them, encourage them to be what? To be the testimony of God. But eventually, remember, the Lord Jesus came to the fig tree, tried to find something. Fig tree means the Old Testament Israelites, Jewish religion. Uh, God 
Lord, come to fig tree, try to find something to eat. And there's nothing. So Lord declared, you will have no more fruit and that tree withered. What does that mean? That means God says, I tried. I tried 1,500 years with Moses, such a great servant, with <coughs> law, I told you who I am, with the tabernacle, with the festival, with the offerings, with all, with the priesthood, with all these things, but it focuses on one race. This actually is not very much God's desire. Seemingly, God wants to gain one group of people, Israelites, hoping through them, through this Israelites, God can gain something, magnify himself. God seemingly failed. failed. So when God says, I'm going to move from the Old Testament to New Testament, from law to grace, from commandment to life, I tell you all, biggest change with all this is that I'm no longer for the Jews alone. I am going to be for all the races, all the native nations, and all the people, all educated, uneducated, uh, high or low, uh, color, different color, make no difference. I am for everybody on this earth. This is a a big change. It's way beyond the understanding of the Jews. But if you consider carefully when the Lord resurrected, after his resurrection, he went to his disciples. He should have said, grace be to you. Don't be so depressed, uh, grieved. Remember, look at me. I'm resurrected. I'm with you. Now, you have me all the time. No. Lord quickly say, no, it's not you. It's not, it's me. It's not your need. It's my need. It's not what you want. It's what I want. You, disciples, you feel so sorrowful because I died. But don't you remember? Don't you see? I'm resurrected. In my resurrection, let me tell you, go ye therefore. Go out. Don't stay just in Jerusalem. Don't stay just with Jews. Go ye therefore, and what? Disciple all the nations. Go ye therefore, disciple all nations. You know, brother, this very much tells us in resurrection, Christ began to show what is really in his heart. My heart is not for one race not for one group of people. My heart is for the whole earth. And more than that, this is the disciples, right? More than that, when Jerusalem comes together, after in the resurrection of Christ, Christ was with them, appearing and disappearing for how? 40 days. Then at the end, the Lord declared to them, the spirit will be upon you. You shall have strength. You shall have Power. Well, no, our question is, I have power, so what can I do? I have power so I can overcome my sickness. The virus is not going to get me because I have power. I have power so I can be a healer. I have power so I can do miraculous things. Uh, I can raise people up from the dead. No, he said, you shall have power. What kind of power is this? That from Jerusalem to all the land of Judea to Samaria, and all the way to the uttermost part of the earth. What is God's heart? Now you see the big change. The big change from Jewish religion to a living God operating mighty, mightily with the desire that he can be the savior, not for one race, not for one class, not for one age, not for one gender, not for one particular situation. I should be the savior of the whole globe. Everyone on this earth need to hear the gospel, need salvation. You know, brother, uh, if you have somewhat this in view, you should be impressed 
Lord, I'm very thankful. I'm very thankful. You show us five visions. First, Joseph. Then, Samaria. Uh, uh, then, Zechariah. And then, uh, Mary. Then, shepherds. Finally, the wise man. Do you realize that uh, in every vision, God says something to tell them, no, it's not you. It is the whole earth. Even though people were interpreted as there for me, as a Jew says, for instance, he told Joseph, you, give, you shall name him Jesus. He shall save his people out of sins. Let me ask you, to Joseph, his people is what? The Jews. Today we understand his people means all the believers. The whole earth, everyone is his people. He likes to save the whole earth. And more than that, talk to Zechariah. He's such a marvelous priest. Goes through some marvelous experience. What is the his end of his testimony. The end of his testimony is that, that he shall, let me read this to you all, he shall give light to those who sit in darkness and the shadow of death. Let me ask you, is this just you? Of course not. We were, we Gentiles were. Not only 2,000 years ago, Gentiles were, even 20, uh, 20, 100 years later, 2,000 years, 2000 years later, we still can see we were those sit in darkness and shed of death. The light come, the morning light, daylight, shine to those who are in darkness. That means what? God is not a God of Jew alone. God is God for the whole earth, the Mary. It's very simple. Mary is a simple, pure, lovely, honorable, to be honored young sister. She said what? She, to her, she says, well, those who are needy, those who are needy, that he will fill the hunger with great things. Great things means what? Spiritual things and physical things. Now, it's not you. It is who earth. Did you see that? To Joseph, who earth? To Zechariah, who earth? To Mary, who earth? So eventually, God has a declaration through the shepherds. To the shepherds, God's declaration is this. Uh, On earth, peace be with those, peace, peace be with those with whom he's pleased. Who is this man? Who are these men? Brother, you know clearly, you will not be just Jews as all. Did you see in these five large visions, brings in the change from, of dispensation. When the dispensation changed, what mainly expressed is that God's desire is fully shown at that time. This is why uh, in the fifth one, you have the wise men. These are Gentiles. Okay, Joseph, Zechariah, Mary, shepherds, they are Jews. But the one last shown are Gentiles. Gentiles, it's very interesting, Gentiles. You know, brother, who are they? Now, uh, there's very hard to have a word to portray this man. Uh, uh, the Greek word could mean the one who study as astronomy. These are those who see things. And also what? Also, the English version most translate to wise man. Chinese translation is highly educated fully equipped. When they look up, they see the things in the sky. When they live on this earth, they see the things on this earth. I just speak to you all. 
呃，上知天文，下知地理。Those are men very well equipped with the riches of human life, with the riches of human knowledge, with the riches of profound knowledge related to what related existence of the universe and related to existence of man. Because they understand this much, they. I'm happy. They are also pursuers. They're not a professor. I'm a professor university. I teach a certain class. I can use the same book and teach them after 30 years. They're not. These are the profound person, so rich in knowledge, so rich in understanding that they become man of wisdom. As a man of wisdom, they pursue what is real. In life, they're willing to pay a price to gain what is a top. You know what's happened? You know what's happened? When they were studying the skies, they found out a star used to be not there appeared. That star was shining. That star, he said, "Oh, that star!" In what? In from east is in the west side. In The other side, this there is a big star shining. This star was never there, but for some reason, ah,、uh, they studied. When they watch the stars, they found out it's about time in the morning, before day came, a star appeared which was never there before. He said, "Oh, that star, that star must be someone, must be something." Really, to God. Did you realize, Gentiles understand incarnation, maybe much more than many of the Jews. Just by seeing that star, they see what John testified, and the Word became flesh. You know when that star appeared. That star appeared when Lord Jesus became a man. When Lord Jesus became a man, that star showed. Appeared, with appearing of the star, they realized, wow, something great happened in the universe. Listen, there's a new star, never was there, now showed up. They understand, just like the Bible says, what star mean? Star means a man. Remember in creation, God created, the, God repaired, the sun. The The light bearers, the day, the sun, evening, the moon. Then the verse added, and he created the stars, or he made the stars. You know, brother, which means what? Christ, the sun, church, the moon. Christ is ever shining. Church is reflecting the light of Christ at night. How do this become reality? Reality comes from many stars. Stars are men, and more than that, when God promised Abraham, "You shall have descendant," then he looked at the stars. Your descendant will be like the stars. So eventually, ah,、uh, you'll be very surprised that that star come, that particular star. Was not there before. They study stars. They understand stars. They know so much. They're rich in this knowledge. But they say, "Wow, something happened. Something happened from if they look at the sky, from the west part, in, on the west. Something happened. That star was never there before. There's a star that's shining. There's a star glowing." They start coming to being when the night is about gone, day is about come. The star come. He said something great happened. These are the wise men. These are not astronomers. Always study stars. Or、oh, this said, this said, that said. No, no. They say this star means something to the universe. In the universe, on this earth, something great happened. God must have be related to this. 
We want to find out. So, with their knowledge, they understand there is one religion on this globe. Know God. Have God. And God is with them. You know, all the religions talk about God. Buddhists talk about God, but no God. Uh, all the religions, whatever you are, but only one religion, that's the Jews. The Jewish religion, 2,000 year, year ago, they have God. They have God speaking. They have God walking among them. They have God doing among them. And those wise men know this. So they understand now. Now, God is coming, doing something. A man must be born to be the king of the Jews. Of the Jews. So let's go see the king. Now you see how it shows the specialties of those wise men. Number one, uh, they're deep in philosophy and uh, full of wisdom. They're very wise. Number two, they're searching intensely for the purpose of human existence. These are not teachers. I'm sorry to say that. These are not even message givers. These are real seekers seeking after reality of human existence seeking after reality of the universe exists. So more than that, uh, <clears throat> they are profound pursuing of the meaning of universe. Not just see, I pay a price. I like to pay a price to get the reality. That's why they are really wise men. So when they know <clears throat> that, uh, know that, uh, uh, no, that at that time, the whole world is only one religion with God, the Judaism. So they're willing to pay all the price in order to gain the truth. Now as a star, I like to pay a price. Let's go. I tell you, if you're that educated, if you are that well-educated, profound person, you must not be very young. You must spend many years in knowledge, in pursuing knowledge, in pursuing the riches, even I say philosophy, of human existence. Now, at their age, maybe older, they, some of them will say, let's go. I think the group could be bigger. But in this big group, few of them, we don't know how many, right? Uh, but few of them will say, Let's go. Let's find out the star. Let's see the star. Let's do something with the star. This is why uh, they begin their long journey from east. We don't know which country is that. Where is that? But journey all the way to Jerusalem. They know that. The star is from, from where they are. They look at it. It's in the west. So they go all the way to where it should be. They go to Jerusalem because they know only religion has God is with Jewish religion. So they realize God is there. And the star is related to God's work, related to what God is doing. So he is there. Therefore, this, their feeling is, let's go. So they went there. And it's interesting. After so much suffering, they got it. And their question is very pure. I don't care politics. I don't even care about religion. I care about the facts. Let me ask you, the one who was born to be the king of the Jews, where is him? We saw his star. We come all the way, maybe close to two years walk. Now, tell me. Where is he? Watch. You know what's happened? The Bible's interesting. All the Jews are bothered. Are they waiting for Messiah? I don't know why they're bothered. And of course, Herod's the one bothered the most. What are you talking about? Uh, when is going to be born the king of Jews? That means I will be overthrown. I'm the ruler. So he found the religion. He get the priests. He get the scribes. And asked them, hey, 
who should be the king of Jew? Where should the king of Jew be born? Listen to these terrible preachers, terrible Bible studies, scholars. Listen to the scribes, he says. Oh, where? Oh, oh, yeah, it's very clear. It's in Bethlehem. Let me tell you the verse. Bethlehem, you are not the smallest among the cities. There will be a king born in your place. What is your feeling? I'm happy I'm on this age with my poor disposition. If I were in that age, I would grab the scribes. I shake them real hard. Wake up, you stupid. You know all this, but where are you actually? I know the truth. I know the Bible. I studied it. I have a lot of time on the truth. I read this book, that book. I pursue a lot. But eventually, where are you? What really comes? Where are you? Listen to things. Will that make you very sad? I know. In Bethlehem. Then, you know, the interest is, hey, wise man, you go. You find him, I'll go to worship him. This from Herod. And the scribe will say, you go. You find him, we reconsider what should we do. Because we are scribes. We are priests. We have our place in religion. If real Christ come, what should we do when we are in religion? But eventually, uh, surprising, did you realize, so marvelous, the star coming down was high star appeared to them, I, I don't know how many times, or maybe every morning they can see the star. But it's far away, remote. Lead them to Jerusalem, because they know only Jewish religion has God. All the others are superstitious religions. Now, when they find that place, they say, okay, we're going to Bethlehem. Where they are on their way to Bethlehem, the star descended to a place can walk ahead of them. Let me ask you, if the star is so high in the heaven is, how can you, they lead you to Bethlehem? It has to be lower and lower. But what does that mean? Don't despise the vision you see. The vision you see, if you are faithful in that, more and more the vision will become intimate. The vision will be cl close. The vision will become near you. The vision can lead you. The vision can become your reala reality of your footsteps. Take you step by step because of that vision. Faithful to a vision is not a small thing. Most people see a vision, have a vision, and for some reason, oh, I saw something, hallelujah, Christ in the church. Then end like, end right over there. No. They see a vision. They pay a price for the vision. So the high vision, heavenly vision, more and more closer to them. To a point, they can see the star walk, move right in front of them, and they can walk by following them. Until what? Until the star stay in that house. I like this part, brother. I see so many brothers have visions. I, feel, I see so few brothers want to pay a price to have the reality of the visions. That's why they always can declare a vision, but heavenly, far away. But some brothers, they can declare the vision nearby. They can declare visions and by saying, I know it, I see it, I'm with it, I enjoy it, it is with me, it leads me, carry me, takes me, my life is mingled with the vision I have. What a marvelous thing this is. Then they see the child. So they offer three things. The gold, which is God himself. So they're declaring, declaring, little child. Now the Bible didn't call him a baby, call him a little child. It means he's about coming out of baby age. He may be about two year old. Time he saw the, the little child, he says, you are the gold. Who are you? You are God, man. Who are you? You are God. Gold means God himself. 
You have just got himself. More than that, let me tell you, uh, your whole life will be so expensive. You have to pay a big price. You have to experience a lot of things to accomplish what the gold desires. So I offer you also Merle. I offer you also frankincense. Frankincense and Merle. Merle means his death. Frankincense means his resurrection. If you come to our line up, it is very simple here, it says they offered gold. Jesus is Son of God. He is He's Son of God, uh, uh, Jesus, Son of God. Uh, he is the first God-man, the first man of God. Marvelous, right? He says, here I see a boy. But you know who is this boy? This boy is God, God himself. He is the first God-man. Outwardly, he's a man, just a boy. But in reality, in him there is God. He's God. Then he says, this boy is going to grow. He will have a life much more difficult, yet much more glorious than anybody can expect. He's going to go through the experience of being a Merle. He is Merle. He is frankincense. These are spices. These spices have to go through a lot of process. Not just they're beautiful or they grow a certain way. No, they have to go through a lot of process. Eventually, they can become a kind of spice, give you odor or fragrance for you to enjoy. So he says, boy, little boy, I see you. I worship you. you why? Because you are gold. You are God man. You are a man, but with gold, like golden life. A golden constitution. Let me, more than that, let me say, let me testify. You will have a hard life. Your life is a life of Merle. Eventually, today we understand, eventually, Jesus died on the cross. But more than that, he's also frankincense. You not just have a hard life, you have a glorious, outpouring, spreading fragrance to all human race. Whosoever believes in me shall be saved. What a merle, what a fragrance. But do you realize who is the first one to declare it? The Gentiles, the Gentiles. The Gentile wise man, they saw something and they pursued. Jew don't. But eventually what's happened? Eventually they left, went back to another route. Harold says, what? He went away? So who is that boy? We don't know. Let's kill them all. But before he wanted to kill them all, Joseph, inspired, led by the angels speaking, went down to Egypt. Went down to Egypt with his family. You know, brother, this is a principle. All the boys were killed. I don't understand where are the priests. I don't understand where are the scribes. Just like today, I see so many Christians were spoiled just by going to Lord's Day morning meetings, seeking friends, uh, have a Christian society, have a Christian social life. They didn't realize they were damaged. They were hurt. They're not brought to the love of Christ having the presence of Christ as their enjoyment, as their substance, as their reality, as the meaning of their existence. On the contrary, they're just like the scribes. We know what's going to happen. So many Christians say, that day everything will be fine. Brother, be careful. That day everything will be fine, but not according to what you think. You have to realize, brother, he went down, Lord Jesus, went down to Egypt, persecuted by the politics and religion. And that become a pattern. Remember how Jesus was crucified? Religion and the politics. Remember when the church was raised up, who killed James? 
John's brother, religion and politics. Remember, eventually, uh, the gospel was preached out by the faithfulness of the apostles. But who eventually persecuted them? Again, politics join religion. Brother, be very careful. Because of that, remember, eventually Paul says, I will go to Gentiles. He was so persecuted. The principle of going to Egypt, come back again. Egypt was Gentile. Lord Jesus says, Joseph said, if Herod wants to kill us all, let's go to Gentile. Now, Paul says, if you Jews will not receive me and persecute me, let me go to Gentiles. Brother, be very careful. We love the Lord, but we are living in this world. Every time when religion becomes overly exhausted, exalted, they can be qualified, they can be qualified to talk with politics. And politics have to honor religion. And religion attach, affiliate themselves to politics. That's where the church, the Christians, going to pay a big price, going to suffer a lot. We need Lord's mercy. Brother, this short story tell you, God says, no, I'm not just for Jews. I'm for the whole earth. You know, who is, who is the first one? Honor me as God. Gentiles. Who is the first one? Tells everybody I'm going to die. Gentiles. Who is the first one? Tell me there's resurrection. Gentiles. Who is the first one to see the world became flesh as the star? Gentiles. What does this mean? This means God declaring to us all, I'm not for Chinese. I'm not for Americans. I'm not for white. I'm not for black. I'm for all. The whole globe is for my salvation. I'm waiting to save everyone. Whosoever believe in Jesus, whosoever call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Hallelujah. Today we see Lord we're thankful. We hope we are part of the wise man. We are not equipped as like them, but at least we want to pay a price as they paid until your testimony become real. May Lord be merciful and be with us. We're thankful to him. Amen. I stop here.